Hey gang, and welcome to another Animal Crossing video. I'm Crossing Channel, and today we're going to be taking a look at eight secrets about Nook's Cranny in Animal Crossing New Horizons. This building is an integral part of the Animal Crossing New Horizons experience. You may find yourself selling items here a lot, or buying items, or just checking the place out to see what they've got, but there's no doubt that everyone has been here at some point. And this building actually has a lot of fun little Easter eggs, secrets, and hidden details that I think you guys would like to know about. I've made some videos like this before, for example I made one about museum secrets, so I thought it's about time that I did one for Nook's Cranny as well. So let's get straight into this. Number 1. When you start up the game you'll be given a nice little tent and some items to help you settle into the island, such as a camping cot, a radio and a lantern too. These items are really cool but as you progress in the game you may find yourself not needing them anymore, which means you may decide to sell them to Timmy or Tommy at Nook's Cranny. If you do, you'll actually get a special piece of dialogue where Timmy or Tommy will say, wait, are they selling? In shock that you would sell some of the items they actually gave you themselves. I guess it's just the nostalgia in them of them not wanting you to get rid of these items, but it is true that as you progress throughout the game, you probably won't need them anymore and you wouldn't really want to use them in a fully decorated house. I just thought this was really funny and honestly kind of cute at the same time, and it's cool that Nintendo even thought to include something like this when they could have easily gotten away with not doing it at all. So I do really like this hidden detail. Number 2. Now, it turns out that Timmy and Tommy actually do sleep. These guys may seem like they're awake all the time and just available whenever you need them, like Isabel and Tom Nook, but that's not actually the case, because both of them actually have their own little sleeping quarters within the building. Now you can't actually access them yourselves, but as you can see in the upgraded Nook's Cranny, there is a little staircase right behind the till, which you can visit and basically take a look at. Sadly, you can't actually go up there, like I mentioned, it is completely inaccessible, but who knows, maybe one day Nintendo will allow us to see where the special characters actually live, because we've never really gotten a glimpse of that in an Animal Crossing game before. It's also visible in the original Nook's Cranny as well, you can see it in the left corner, and again we don't really get a proper glimpse at what it is. In this one it looks like it's on the ground floor, but on the other one it looks like it's on the second or in some kind of attic. So I just thought that was really neat that Nintendo decided to include some kind of sleeping quarters for these two because they definitely do work really hard and deserve the rest. Number 3. Here's something that's really interesting and a little bit of a scam on Nook's Cranny's part. Now of course you can buy regular tools from here as well as flimsy tools but you can also buy these interesting tools which seem kind of fancy like for example the outdoorsy shovel and this little slingshot here which is pretty cool as well, the outdoorsy slingshot. And that's just a few of them, there's a bunch of them that you've probably seen. They all have different colour variations but what I wanted to mention here is that the regular slingshot which costs 900 bells and the outdoorsy slingshot which costs 2,500 have the same durability. That means they will break with the same amount of uses. So you're paying that extra amount of bells basically just to get a different aesthetic. Now don't get me wrong, some of these aesthetics are cool and you can get a bunch of different looks and colours for them. For example, the duck fishing rod I think is adorable. But if you don't have a ton of bells to spend, you definitely will just want to get the regular version and not spend more bells on the different version because you're basically just getting the same thing. Number 4. It turns out that on certain occasions if you manage to get your hands on a special golden recipe, Timmy and Tommy will actually make a special comment if you try and sell it to them. So for example I'm trying to sell the recipe for a golden net here but Timmy and Tommy are warning me that I probably shouldn't do this because it's such a special and valuable recipe that I might not be able to get again. After all, the majority of people aren't going to want to trade these recipes with you, like with other recipes, so if you sell them, it might be your last chance to actually get that item. So it's something they definitely recommend not doing, and I also recommend not doing it as well. Definitely don't get rid of those golden recipes unless somehow you have a duplicate, and if somehow you do have a duplicate, it's probably probably best just to give it to someone else. Again, I really like that they put this little dialogue in for these two, I think that was very cool, and it's something that a lot of people won't probably notice, because let's be honest, who is going to go out there and try and sell the golden recipes? It just doesn't really add up. Number 5. It turns out that Timmy and Tommy actually have their very own cute little tips jar, which sadly is empty most of the time. It's 
Also visible in the original Nook's Cranny as well, the very first version of the building that you can get on your island. And it's this blue little thing which you can put some tips in if you'd like to in an ideal world. Sadly, in the Animal Crossing world, you actually can't tip them at all. It's physically not possible to give them anything. So this really is just a little decoration, but I thought it was very cute. And it's something that I reckon most people don't even notice the majority of the time because it's just so small and it just kind of blends into the background of the little place. But there is so much detail in this little building, like with most of the buildings in this game. So I always love pointing out the really tiny things that I feel like a lot of other people just wouldn't notice. Number six. So the Nook's Cranny facade will actually change with the different seasons in the game. There are a whole bunch of different looks that you can get from it as you can see on screen, one for each of the seasons, which is definitely really cool. The spring one very nicely invokes spring with the little watering can with the flowers in it, which I really love. You've got the summer one, which is just perfect for the warm months of the year. You have the one for autumn and kind of the Halloween-y type time with the nice leaves and the pumpkins, which is really great. You've also got one for winter too, with a cute little snowman that I definitely hope Timmy and Tommy built, which is something that I would absolutely love to see them doing. I just think it's great that this building gets updated for different times of the year. And I believe some of these things actually change depending on what event is going on in the game, which is another little detail about Nook's Cranny I'm gonna talk about soon. It's just so cute to me that the building changes and kind of updates as your island does as well. It's a shame that Nook's Cranny doesn't have more upgrades, but if eventually the building does get bigger and expands, I definitely hope they keep this where it changes throughout the different seasons, because it is one of the cutest little details that they've added to the game, and it's just something that I really like. Number seven. So, Timmy and Tommy will actually kick you out of Nook's Cranny, something that I think quite a few people know about, but I just wanted to mention here because it is such a fun little Easter egg. If you stay past the closing time, closing time of the building, they will actually kick you out, which is really funny to me, and you just won't be able to get back in. The Able Sisters actually won't do this to you, so it's just Timmy and Tommy who don't want you exploring their building past their bedtime. Number eight. Timmy and Tommy will actually wear cute little outfits for some of the different events that are happening in the game. For example, these cute little hats that they wear during Halloween. They'll also wear Santa hats and stuff for Festival as well, which is honestly just adorable. I really love the fact that they gave them little costumes. I think the Halloween ones are the absolute cutest. And it's just nice that they kind of take part in the celebrations of the events, something that they didn't really do in previous Animal Crossing games. So that's something that I think has helped develop their characters even more and just shown off how cute they are. If you weren't a fan of these guys before, then just look at them in their cute little hats because it's made me a massive fan of them. So I'd love to, for you guys to let me know in the comments section down below what you think of these Nook's Cranny secrets. How many of these did you actually know yourself? Let me, let me know in the comments section down below. And also leave a comment to let me know any other Nook's Cranny secrets, hidden details, or easter eggs that you might know. If you made it to the end, also be sure to comment Bob's Gang down below. You can subscribe and turn on channel notifications to get notified about more Animal Crossing videos. And you can also leave a like if you enjoyed this one. If you want to help support my channel, click the join button down below the video to become a member of the Bob's Gang.